Hello friends, welcome back to the another video on a web development series for beginners. In this video, I am going to talk about what are the available career path you can follow in web development and what technologies you need to learn. We will also see what learning roadmap you should follow so that you can become a web developer as quickly as possible and start doing freelancing or get a job in a tech industry. So let's get started. So if you are interested in client side programming, that is what we see in desktop or mobile browsers, or you like to build websites, fancy user interfaces using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, more on a bit in a second, then it is termed as front end development. On the other hand, if you are interested in how the request is handled by the server, fetching data from database and give response, then that is termed as back end development. It is straightforward. The end which we see on the browser is front end and things happen behind the scenes are back end. Now, what is full stack development? A full stack development is referred to as a front end and a back end both. As a developer, you are responsible for your UI interfaces and integrate it with the back end system built by you to fetch the data from the database and server side logic. You can say a full stack do end to end implementation. Let's take a deep dive in each one of them. As a front end developer, you need to have some tools set up to start development. I have a dedicated video on it web development tools and setup where I show how you can download and install each required tool. I will add the link in the description below so that you can check it later on. First, you need to have a very good code editor. You can use Visual Studio Code or Sublime, but Visual Studio Code is recommended. Then you need to have a web browser. It's better to use Chrome browser. Next, you need to install some very useful editor extensions that will make your life a little bit easy during development. Check out for live server. It helps to reload the page in real time. As soon as we change the code in the file, the browser reloads on its own. Next is Prettier Code Formatter helps you to format your code when you save your file changes. And last is the SAS compiler. It compiles your SAS code into CSS on the go. We will also see about SAS in a bit. Now what technologies you should learn for front end development. You start with a very basic HTML. Although it's not a language, it's a page markup. You should learn HTML semantic elements like header, footer, page structure and page markup. Next, you need to learn CSS basics. Understand box model, positions, grid layout, flex layout. Check out for responsive layouts as a lot of people using mobile these days to surf on the go. So our website should be responsive to small screens. Check for media queries, mobile first approaches. Once you have hands on on CSS basics, go for the CSS frameworks like Bootstrap, Semantic UI. You don't need to memorize them. Just have a feel of using CSS classes. Also check for CSS preprocessors. Says it will help you to build your own style guide as it gives enhanced features which we don't have in normal CSS. And lastly, browser dev tools. Get yourself familiar with them as they will help you to inspect your render HTML styles and troubleshooting issues. After that, it's time to learn JavaScript. Start with the vanilla JavaScript, no frameworks, understand the basics, how we create functions, loops, how we write conditions, arrays, objects. Once you are good at them, level up yourself for DOM manipulation, events, JSON, AJAX. After that, learn for ES6 syntaxes like arrow functions, classes, destructuring, promises. Once you are comfortable with this, now it's time for you to check for JavaScript frameworks like React, Angular and Vue. Although React is a library, but we count it as a replacement for Angular. I would recommend you to start with React first as it is simple in comparison to Angular. To work with framework, you need to learn to use build tools like NPM, YAN. So now you must be thinking there's a hell lot of things to learn and where to start learning these technologies and languages. Let me show you the path which I followed for my learning journey. Start building static websites with HTML and CSS. Once you have a hands on on that, 
try some CSS frameworks and classes. Try to use CES and build your own style guide for the website. Now transform your static website into dynamic using JavaScript events, forms, validation. Once you are done with it, now it's time for you to learn JavaScript frameworks. I recommend you to start with React. Build reusable components, complex sites, use build tools, deploy your site on Firebase, Netlify. Once you are done with it, try out other frameworks and backend stuffs. You are now a front-end developer and ready to get a job. So that's all for the front-end development. Now let's explore the back-end development. The first and foremost thing is you need to pick a server-side language, whether it's Node.js, PHP, Python or Java. These are the top programming languages in the industry right now and they are not going away soon. Actually, choosing a backend is not so straightforward. We need to consider a lot of factors like what project are we building? Does we need machine learning, AI support? Or we have a lot of IO operations, security concerns. So we choose backend considering these kinds of questions. Next is to choose a framework to work with these server-side technologies. Like if you are using Node.js, then you need to pick Express. If you are using Python, then you need to pick Django. Apart from that, you should also have a basic understanding of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. We also need to understand database concepts. We need to learn SQL. If we are using any query language, then we need to learn ORM. Next, a backend developer also do server-side configuration sometimes. There are DevOps team to take care, but sometimes they seek inputs from backend developer. And last, you need to learn API design and development so that the front-end can consume these APIs and display data for the users. Next is what can be the backend learning process? I'm repeating again, this is based on my personal experience. There is no standard process to learn. Pick any one server-side language and learn the basics. Once you have a firm grip over the basics, move to a framework that will help you to build services quickly. It's time to build an API, do some data validations, write some backend logic, business functions. After that, work on security of your API, authentication, check for authorization, logging, error handling. Now it's time for you to connect your application with the database, check for data storage, data access, and last, repeat and explore more features case by case and build more projects and APIs, deploy your application on the server. Now let's understand what we need to learn for full stack development. Nothing special here. A full stack is called as a jack of all trades. Although sometimes it's little depressing, but it's true that you can't be an expert for everything. But you master the technology and have understanding on both front end and a back end technologies. You should be familiar with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. You should also know JavaScript frameworks and build user interfaces and reusable components. You should have one server side language like Node or Python. If you are good with JavaScript, then you can pick Node as your first server side language. Next back end frameworks. Database as you will be responsible for writing services and last some site technologies like Git and GitHub, API and REST and testing your own code. It's very important nowadays companies follow TDD or BDD pattern for development where you will need to write test cases for your own codes. Actually, the server side technologies are common whether you choose front end, back end or a full stack. So that's all we have. I think I tried to explain you as much as I can. And now you have a pretty good idea about web development career paths and which one to choose and how to progress. If you think this video was helpful to you in any sort, then a thumbs up is appreciated. If you want to get notified for the new videos, make sure you subscribe the channel. If you want to connect with me, check out my Instagram and Facebook links in the description below. Thanks for watching.